let's geek out to some weather on this Thursday evening as we get set for the weekend, the end of meteorological summer, the start of meteorological fall, and of course the Canfield Fair and Labor Day, and we have high school football to talk about this evening. So let's not waste any time. First of all, let's review the summer season. Even though we have two more days of summer, meteorological and climatological summer anyway, uh, left to go. Uh, this will be the last weather for Weather Geeks until Monday. So I wanted to do a quick review of summer temperatures and precipitation and how our forecast did for the summer season. We're going to do an autumn forecast coming up Monday evening, uh, Labor Day evening, on weather for Weather Geeks. All right, these are the temperature anomalies for the first month of, of summer back in June. As you can see, it was warmer than average almost everywhere across the country with the exception of some far north latitudes. June was a pretty warm month locally and in many, many places across the lower 48 states. But July was a little bit of a different story, at least compared to the average. Now, Keeping in mind, of course, July is, climatologically speaking, the hottest month of the year in the United States. Uh, when you have a minus two, minus three on this map, it's not like it was freezing cold or anything like that. Just a couple of degrees below average. But still, it was notably not that hot across the Corn Belt and across parts of the Great Lakes states. We were a little above average here locally in far eastern Ohio and western PA. And this was a month that the uh, consensus forecasts went a little bit sideways, not necessarily here locally, but uh, I think, you know, the consensus in the weather enterprise was this was going to be a very hot month in the Midwest, and it just didn't work out that way. A couple of reasons why, major reason, perhaps uh, La Nina did not come on this summer nearly as fast as some of the modeling was suggesting earlier on in the spring. And so that may be a reason why the heat was kind of curtailed in July in much of the Midwest, it was kind of the same idea in August. Here locally, we're going to finish August maybe just a hair above average, but overall a very typical August in the greater Youngstown area. It was a scorching hot August in Texas, especially western Texas. But once again, the Corn Belt, not that hot. Um, it really wasn't that hot compared to the average in the Carolinas and up the Mid-Atlantic, up through the Mid-Atlantic states as well. Uh, so, you know, all things considered, you know, the summer forecast here locally um, in terms of temperatures, did not do bad. We'll show you what we actually had in, a, in our forecast here in just a moment, but I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about precipitation here locally. This is where we stand as of this recording. Now, we have two more days left in the month and the season, and especially on Saturday, I think it's a real good bet we're going to add on to these totals. But here's where we stand, and for the season, meteorological summer, 1.74 inches is the deficit at the Youngstown Warren Airport. Notice we still have a surplus for the year, but for the season, 1.74 inches behind average. Now this was the uh, forecast we went out with at the end of meteorological spring in terms of temperatures. We thought the strongest odds would be for a warmer than average summer on the order of one to three degrees. We're going to finish summer I think around a degree to almost maybe a degree and a half above average. So this was a pretty good forecast even though was it as quite as hot as kind of my gut feeling was? Yeah, it wasn't quite that hot. Um, but uh, you know, we put the strongest odds on what ended up being the outcome. And it was the same idea precipitation-wise. Our strongest odds, it was a tie um, with a 35% chance of it being near average and below average. The odds were not very strong of a wetter than average summer. And we're going to finish the summer probably, depending on what happens Friday and Saturday, I think we'll probably finish the summer somewhere north of, of an inch in, the, uh, in, the, in terms of a deficit. And so, you know, we're going to end up right around here. Um, and so our forecast for the season and locally was pretty good, even though, you know, I kind of in my gut expected a, one of the hotter summers we've had in recent memory, and that includes in the department of 90 degree days. I expected double digit 90 degree days this summer. We're sitting at seven right now, and we might just add one more to this tomorrow. Our forecast for Friday is 90, but that is probably it for the season. Don't see the kind of pattern that's going to support 90s again. Uh, during uh, September, and then you can pretty much close the book at that point. It's very, very rare to see a 90 around here once you get past, say, mid to late September. Um, so we're probably going to finish either, either at 7 or 8, very close to the average, going along with the idea that temperatures this summer, while on the warmer side, were not extreme locally by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so looking ahead to autumn, again, we're going to do an autumn forecast on Monday evening, but here's a little hint of what I'm looking at in, in terms of analogs, and we're going to focus on September. Here's uh, all the years that I am focusing on for the fall season in terms of our analogs. And those are years that in the past, especially the recent past, have a lot of similarities, we think, in the oceans especially, um, along with some other factors. But put uh, simply, these are the years that most closely match where we are right now in late August, globally speaking, in terms of the ocean water temperatures. And one year is on here twice, 2013. 
The rest of them are on here once. 2013 is on here twice because it's a particularly good match at this point. Um, now, if you are familiar with your weather analogs, 2013 might get your attention because that was a cold winter, 2013, 2014. Um, but focusing on September, when you look at all these years and kind of take uh, stitch them together and make a composite map, um, odds favoring warmer than average temperatures in the Midwest, maybe a little cooler than average parts of the mid-Atlantic states down into the southeast, and a whole lot where there's not a strong signal either way, including around our area. And I think this is, generally speaking, the right idea. This composites map makes a lot of sense to me for September. I don't expect September locally to be anything to write home about temperature-wise. I think it may end up being kind of like August um, in terms of the departure from average. It could go a little bit on either side of average. Um, but a big departure does not seem likely. And considering how hot our Septembers have been over the last 10 years, this will be one of the cooler Septembers we've had in recent memory. That's the way it looks right now. All right, back here in the short term, it is Thursday. So we got an update on the U.S. drought monitor, as we do every Thursday. And we pay, pay uh, particularly close attention, of course, to this product in the spring and summer season. And while we didn't see a big expansion of abnormally dry area here locally, you know if you have a yard at least, if not a garden, if not you know fields and things like that, you know, it's pretty dry. Um, but it's much worse off to our south. In fact, the extreme drought, that's that red color, it expanded some to include almost all of southeast Ohio, a good chunk of the panhandle of West Virginia, including, you know, as nearby as southern Jefferson County, just off to the south of Columbiana County. So again, it gets a lot worse, a lot drier, not far to our south, but around our viewing area, it's still pretty darn dry. And we've been dealing with bouts of that at times over the last few months. Here's a live look outside at the Canfield Fairgrounds at 737. I was out there for the six o'clock news. It's actually pretty pleasant because we had some clouds overhead and it was actually a little bit breezy. So. I was not, you know, really super uncomfortable standing on the on the pavement out there at the fair like uh, Andrew was at five when there were fewer clouds around. But for me at six, doing uh, live weather out there, it really was actually pretty pretty pleasant. And it's a great sunset. In fact, a sunset this evening that will occur at at uh, seven fifty nine, our last eight p.m. sunset until April was last evening. We've had a few thunderstorms on the radar, but all to our south pretty much over the last several hours. We had some lightning and thunders nearby as parts of Hancock County and Jefferson County, just off to the south of our viewing area. But all that is fading away as of uh, 7.38, and we'll be left with a mostly clear sky tonight. Now, much like last night, there could be some patches of fog overnight. We had some patches last night and this morning. Uh, our model here tends to overdo the coverage of the fog a little bit. I don't think everyone's going to have fog tomorrow morning, uh, just like this morning. It'll be patchy, but it could be locally dense. The severe weather outlook for Friday into Friday night from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, does highlight Northeast Ohio and Northwest PA in a level one risk of severe weather. I'm not real gung-ho about damaging wind or hail producing storms around here. Maybe a puff of wind and maybe some small hail out of any particularly ambitious storm towards late in the afternoon, early in the evening on Friday. But just like as has been the case over the last several days, I don't think the coverage is all that high. In fact, in other words, you know, more places are going to stay dry than will get wet. But it's a Friday evening, it's high school football season, so the forecast is important to folks, whether you're heading to the fair or heading to a high school football game Friday evening, particularly, say, between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., that three-hour window. Some places are probably going to try to get a thunderstorm. Some places, a shower, um, and then, you know, conditions will improve, I think, after that as we head towards sunset. So temperatures are the story for one more day tomorrow after a daytime high of 90 and the heat index in the mid-90s. Kickoff temperatures tomorrow evening where it's not raining anyway in the upper 70s and lower 80s. Now, it's still going to be muggy into the day Saturday, but not as hot Saturday because there will be more clouds and higher chances of rain. There's our model depiction for tomorrow evening. Again, the coverage is scattered in nature. It's not one of those situations where everyone's going to get wet. Now, the timing of Saturday's rain. There could be a shower in the morning, but this front looks a little bit slower than it has been, and so I think the wettest part of the day is likely to be towards midday into early to mid-afternoon. In fact, let's back up our model animation to right about here. This is 2, 3 in the afternoon. This is probably the wettest part of the day, um, early to mid-afternoon. Um, this is when our front starts to approach. Temperatures will probably be at their warmest before this main cluster of showers and storms moves through. So it may reach 81 or even 82 at about noon, but then by 4 p.m. it may be 72. Um, it's going to be one of those kinds of, of situations. So shower storms can impact your plans on Saturday. If you're coming out to the Canfield Fairgrounds, 
Uh, you can look for the weather team there, 10 to 2 on Friday, and I will be there with the evening crew, 10 to 2 on Saturday. Derek, Madison, Aaron, uh, Dana, myself will be there on Saturday. Stop by and say hi and complain about the weather if it is raining. All right, rest of the weekend, though, looking good. We're going to clear things out Saturday evening. There could be some fog, especially in areas that get a decent amount of rain Saturday. Could be some fog to start Sunday. You notice there's one more front on our weather map. This front might squeeze out a renegade shower Sunday evening, but the chances are low. Sunday overall, a nice day. Monday overall, a really, really nice day for Labor Day. Temperatures this weekend, again, that's a midday high of 81 on Saturday. Sunday afternoon, warmer than average by a couple of degrees, but with lower dew points, be a nice afternoon. Again, stray shower Sunday evening. I can't rule that out at this point, but we're not going to count on that. Most of Sunday and Monday should be A-OK, -okay, and what a great forecast we have for much of next week. Thanks for watching tonight on this expanded edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday evening. Come see us at the fair Friday and into a Saturday as well. Again, I'll be in the tent 10 to 2 both days. Thanks for watching tonight and all week long. I'll see you back here on Monday on Labor Day for Weather for Weather Geeks, in which we will do our annual fall forecast.